Setting goals is the first step in turning the invisible into the visible because a goal properly set is halfway reach. But how exactly do you go about setting goals? Well, on this episode of the Legacy and Leadership Podcast, Jimmy and I break down exactly that, including understanding your why, how to set goals for yourself and others, and why you have to keep your vow if you're going to properly follow through. So tune in, get your notepads ready, because it's about that time. Right about now, you are listening to the Legacy and Leadership Podcast, a show where we discuss living as a leader worth following, leading others to do the same, and in doing so, leaving a legacy for future generations. My name is Jimmy Gonzalez Jr., a learning and development professional and leadership coach, sitting down with my co-host, Anthony Devon Watts Jr., an expert contact center leader that has effectively led and developed dynamic teams with high motivation. Together, we have over 30 years experience in the corporate game. Join us as we discuss our growth as leaders, share the lessons we've learned, and interview others to see how their leadership style was shaped as they were mentored by adversity. Legacy leaders, welcome back to the Legacy in Leadership podcast. Uh, this is episode 18. I am Jimmy Gonzalez Jr., along with my co host, Anthony Devon Watts Jr. <laughs> <laughs> You're how's it going, guys? We are coming at you again with uh, episode 18. Uh, we have been going through uh, a new series, as we like to do, on foundational skills of leadership. Uh, so if you were with us in the last episode, uh, we talked about time management and some of the importance uh, of taking a look at kind of some of those time bandits and really figuring out where your time is going and then things that you can do to more effectively manage your time. So we are trucking along again uh, in this series of foundational skills of leadership. And today we're going to be discussing goal setting um, and the kind of the whys of that and, and making sure again that we kind of really break down uh, some specific skills for you. So uh, definitely stay tuned because uh, I think you're going to enjoy that very much. Um, as we continue to go through, you know, uh, definitely make sure, guys, that the first thing that you do is that you subscribe, that you uh, download the episodes and uh, again, leave some some comments for us as well. We definitely appreciate that. I'm still going to keep asking. Go ahead and take that screenshot, take the screenshot and post that to Instagram, whether it's in your story, in your feed. Go ahead and tag us at Legacy Leadership uh, and then also uh, tag myself at Coach underscore Jimmy G Jr. And then you can tag Devon at uh, Leadership Docent. We would appreciate that very much. And the third thing is make sure that you share. Share the episode uh, with friends and family. Share it again with other individuals that you feel uh, will get value out of the conversations and the tips and the tools that we're providing uh, and also that you know would definitely want to be part of this, this tribe that we call legacy leaders so um, yeah we're, we're continuing to go down that path I think hopefully by the the next episode uh, yeah you'll see it the legacy <laughs> and leadership podcast and legacy leaders is going to be like all in your face. <laughs> uh, so we're excited about uh, some more visuals that that we're working on. Um, but yeah, definitely again, share that. We appreciate that very much. Um, my man is over here drinking some cold brew. We are ready and excited again about uh, chopping up this this topic and getting into this episode. Uh, yes, but uh, how, how's your day been so far? Good, man. Uh, I'm feeling like uh, the world's greatest boss. That's why I had to wear my Michael Scott uh, sweatshirt today. I see I'm feeling you. like Michael Gary Scott. Um, but yeah, man, no, I'm feeling good, man. Uh, we had you know, like I had a, just a, a productive day at work overall. You know, kind of, you know, same old, same old, so nothing, nothing too crazy. Um, <clears throat> I had a good weekend. Um, we ended up so we ended up doing our family tradition, usually around um, leading up to Halloween or so, we try and find a pumpkin patch mm -hmm. uh, to go to. Um, and um, obviously living in Florida, you know, uh, pumpkin patches just in general are um, in a scarcity. Um, and that just continues to be the case as you travel further and further south. Mm. So we, um, <clears throat> the first place that we went that uh, the missus ended up finding was this place dubbed Pumpkin Town. 
Pumpkin Town, right? So like, oh man, it's like you look on the like the website, and it's like, you know, Pumpkin Town, a place of uh, family and fun, and there's a bounce house, and there's a hay area, so you can take photos, and then there's a bunch of pumpkins that you can pick, and um, you know, even got um, you know a little like a little uh, merry-go-round, like all this stuff, right? So um, come join the fun, um, you know, annual tradition, blah 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 blah. And so we're like, all right, bet we're gonna go to Pumpkin Town. So we, we hop in the whip, load up the kids, travel the uh, 25, 30 minutes or so to Wellington, which is a, like a little bit further north from where we're currently at. Um, and like we're following the GPS, right? It's how you, you know, go straight, make a left, make a right, make a left. Um, and it, where it tells us to make a left at just doesn't seem like where we should make a left because it's like it's like. Um, a town center, like, uh, like think like Waterford or something like that. If you're mm-hmm. familiar with the, the Orlando area, like it, it doesn't scream farm. Like I can see a Applebee's, I can see like a Michael's. Right. So I'm like, okay, well, where the hell is this pumpkin town? At? Like, is it a store? Like, did they like rent like a spirit of Hollywood or something? Yeah. Bruh, tell me how we pull up in front of basically like a bank parking lot. And they have coned off maybe about, I want to say maybe about 20, maybe about 20 or 30 parking spots. And they have set up a tent and there are pumpkins under there. There is a janky bounce house. (laughs) There is like four bales of hay for like a photo op. Then there's like another tent of like a, like a TP made out of hay for another photo op. They're like right next to each other. And then there's like this um, <clears throat> this uh, squeaky like little Ferris wheel type thing. Like it was super small. It was super rusted. Like you would need a techno shot if, if you got on it. Right. And so we're looking like, is this this is pumpkin town? Like this is pumpkin town. Like this, this wasn't even pumpkin block. How small it was. So we're like, oh, well, we already drove the twenty five minutes. Let's try and make the best of it. We get out the car. Um, the the boys tried to make the best of the moment. Uh, Linux is at that that age now. Like he's super, um, you know, independent as you saw. Like super independent. So he like want to go where he want to go and do what he want to do. So he started throwing a little fit because you know we wouldn't let him pick up little pumpkins and throw them because that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to pick up the pumpkin and throw it because <laughs> it was entertaining to him. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then we ended up trying to find another pumpkin spot. We're like, nah, this can't be our pumpkin tradition memory or pumpkin patch memory. So we ended up finding another spot in West Palm. Um, it was a little bit better. Um, it was like actually like um, almost like kind of like a fairground in terms of the size and mm-hmm. um and stuff like that. And, um, you know, it was like 15 bucks for geo and he could do everything. So there's like a bounce house and there's slides and then they let him pick a pumpkin, he could paint a pumpkin. And then there was like a little janky petting zoo, which had like just two goats, you know what I mean? But we made the best of our South Florida pumpkin patch experience. So, um, I got to experience that, uh, you know, which was cool. And then, um, you know, obviously, you know, yesterday for our listeners, you know, had the opportunity to have an impromptu, uh, meet up with you, mm-hmm. um, you know, um, you were down in my area, um, with your son and, you know, got to grab a bite to eat or as a, you know, Gabby calls it our mandate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and so, uh, yeah, man, uh, you know, um, those things were actually like really, really pretty cool. Um, so far early in this week. Yeah. Uh, it was it definitely uh, a somewhat. Yeah, it was an impromptu trip. And again, it was just I told you a story. It was just funny. We're riding down and uh, my son had no choice. But he was he he wanted to listen to the podcast because he hadn't listened to, to really any of the episodes yet. Uh, so we listened to some podcasts and uh, it was the episode four with uh, with Shav. And you talking about your barber and the whole switch and having <laughs> to find something. He's like, did he move? I'm like, yeah, he's in Boca. He's like, oh, I didn't know that. I'm like. Like, oh, snap, like we're <laughs> almost there. Like I can just completely forgot in kind of the haste of us trying to get this stuff done. And so, yeah, it was it was good to see the family definitely uh, and see Lennox throwing stuff around the house and yeah. uh, obviously have some time with you and, and my son and have dinner. So that was cool. Um, my weekend was good, too. You know, I spent uh, several hours in the chair on Saturday for session two of the the sleeve on my arm hey. and, and, and yeah, getting that tattoo work done. So um, that was cool. And, uh, yeah, 
it's that time, man. You know, I'm, I'm off this week and <clears throat> excuse me. Last uh, last Friday, the beginning of the weekend was the the end of an era. So uh, for our listeners, for those out there that uh, that know myself and know Dia and most have, have heard already uh, after 18 years uh, with my previous company, Sears and then Transform, uh, I, I resigned. Yeah. And uh, it was my last day and I'm off this week and looking forward to uh, the next chapter and uh, the newest company that I will be working for uh, as a learning and development specialist. So uh, bittersweet, man, definitely bittersweet. Uh, but I am doing my best to enjoy this time and just getting some rest uh, and relax and, and reflect and, and just kind of you know get my mind right for again for this next chapter. So looking forward to that. Very excited uh, about the future and, and what God has in store. So absolutely. Uh, and again, the time off gave me an opportunity to spend some time with my son. We had some really good conversations and yeah. And again, get a chance to see you and the family. Um, and I, I realized I haven't seen you, I don't know, probably since like February or something like that. It's been a while. So face to face, obviously right. you see virtually, <laughs> it's just kind of weird because that's how the, the life that we live these days. Um, but yeah, that was, that was definitely fun and, and a good way to, to start the week for us. So, um, so that's all good. And like I said, man, just ready to, to get into this topic and and break down for our legacy leaders goal setting and really how do you achieve success in your personal life how do you achieve success in business through goal setting um and it, the the fact of the matter is is that you can like you can set goals that contribute to your personal and the organizational goals and aspirations as well and and mix those together so I think what we wanted to do is is really just start off with the why, right? The mm -hmm. why is, is always going to continue to pop up because it's important. So from your perspective, why is it important for our legacy leaders out there to to choose goals and, and just to set goals in the first place? Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I think, gosh, uh, either it was something I read or, you know, something pops has been saying to me since, you know, since I was legit, but, um, you know, being able to begin with an end in mind, right? Like you're never going to get in the car without a final destination, you know, um, in mind. Um, right. And goal setting to me is really that it's identifying where you ultimately want to end up. Right. Or, you know, what is the, what is the purpose um, and defining what the final destination is. Right. Defining what the end goal is allows you to really work, work backwards from that and make sure that you have the right roadmap to success. You have the right things planned out for that journey and what that's going to take. Um, <clears throat> and I really like the fact that, you know, we're planning on talking about not just how to set goals uh, personally, because I think naturally people tend to think when they think about setting goals, the first thing they tend to think about is like for myself, right? Like, you know, okay, well, like what I want to do in my, my life and my family and, you know, um, <clears throat> you know, my career. Um, and so we spend a lot of time kind of really thinking about that, not realizing that a lot of the skills, all the skills actually that we use for establishing our personal goals translate directly to also establishing goals for others and, and goals for our team. Mm -hmm. um, and because we think about those things so siloed, um, a lot of times we fail to have those skills translate. And, you know, we'll talk about it a little bit more when we get into the practical application of how to properly set goals. But um, <clears throat> Yeah, I just think about, you know, even myself and things I've had to do in order to keep myself honest or when I'm working with others, the extent in which we are, um, you know, thoughtful and measured and, um, you know, writing things down and, you know, committing to things, visualizing for our personal goals. We don't take our team. Sometimes we fail to take our teams through that when establishing business goals and establishing business goals and, and giving out um expectations from that, you know, from that perspective. So I'm really excited to break that down. But um, again, it really comes down to defining the why, right? Defining the why um, and what, you know, defining why are we doing what we're doing and what will it look like when we have been successful um, at doing that? And so I'm actually really excited, you know, to be able to share this with our listeners specifically to um, have you walk through some of these things and break down because I know in the past, um, I've actually had you um, facilitate a couple of goal setting, um, you know, trainings and refreshers for our leaders to really give them the practical application of how to properly set goals for themselves and to set goals for others. Um, and um, I, you know, I found that it really helped them to kind of take their um, their skill sets as leaders to the next level because everybody gets exposed to some extent, whether you're in leadership or not. Um, 
you know, you can find information out there or even, you know, as you're you know coming up through school, like you get exposed a little bit to the concept of smart goals. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's a really good foundational place to start. And it's really kind of a, a easy way to digest goal setting. Um, but it's not the full, it's not the full toolkit. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not the full toolkit. Like, um, you know, if you, you know, you go to, you know, Target or, or Walmart or something like that, mostly Target, I'll use Target because Walmart's a little bit more robust, but like you go to Target and like that little hardware section that they have is like literally one aisle. Like mm-hmm. they got, they got like the essentials toolkit, right? You're like, okay, I got a hammer. I got like an Allen wrench. Like, okay, maybe I got like a screwdriver, but that's really it in the package, but that's not the full toolkit. Like if you were really going to take on a large job. Um, and so to me, that's what smart goals are. Smart goals is kind of that you know, the basic essentials of goal setting. But mm-hmm. I think the concepts that, you know, you've shared with uh, prior teams um, for me um, and that you'll be sharing with our listeners is more of that full robust toolkit um, that you can really take with you and tackle any job that you have in front of you when it comes to goal setting. Yeah, I think the, I, I definitely agree that sometimes we miss the mark in, you know, focusing on ourselves and not taking those same skills and principles and and teaching that and making sure that our, our as a whole, our team are following some of those same steps. But this is still a, a foundational skill. Uh, I, I meet leaders, you know, people who are in leadership positions all the time that that even have teams, but still haven't really, you know, mastered that that skill of goal setting. Um, and really when we talk about setting a goal, it's, it's really just a working plan. Like what is that, that plan for completing a task or trying to accomplish something? Um, and how, how are you going to be certain that you're giving yourself and your team the best possible opportunities to achieve that goal, that task, and again, accomplish what it is that you're trying to accomplish. So, so yeah, so excited about, about that. Cause again, it's, it's important for an individual basis and from a, a team perspective as well. I think it's important to, to take a look at, you know, choosing your goals and in, from the business perspective, and I, I definitely want to make sure when we're talking about this whole concept of goal setting, and especially within uh, the business and, and talking about teams, there's going to be certain you know, KPIs and certain goals that the overall business has that, you know, as a group, we're trying to achieve. Um, but how your individual team members go about handling their specific tasks and their roles that help the overall business achieve, you know, that task and accomplish that thing that it's trying to accomplish. That's really going to be on them. Like we can't, you can't create goals for people. You can, you mentioned expectations. You can uh, outline what the expectations are. This is the direction we're headed. These are the things that we're trying to accomplish as a business. And then each individual would have to set their own goals. So it's personal to them and they have more skin in the game and more desire to want to accomplish that. Cause again, it's not something that was given to them. It was something that, that they created on their own. Uh, but again, it's, it's important to, to go through that process of, you know, why, why am I trying to achieve this in, in the first place? So from a personal perspective, um, if I'm talking about a number of different goals, so whether it's, it could be a health and fitness goal, it could be a skill development goal, you know, so if I want to, to learn how to get better at creating PowerPoints and, and you know, kind of creating uh, business presentations, okay, that's, it's a good goal, but you know, why, why do I really want to do it? Does it really matter if I'm able to do that? Now, definitely if it also aligns with my role and, and what the business is trying to accomplish, then uh, it makes it even that much more, I think, achievable and, and desirable to want to uh, attain that particular goal. Uh, but just making sure that you have a strong why, you know, I, I remember back in the day, you know, when we had the, uh, the gym, um, and you, you were witness to this as well. You know, we had the, the why wall and always, you know, having individuals write down why they're trying to obtain these specific goals. Um, cause inevitably there's going to be some, some moment, some challenge, some obstacle that you're faced with. So knowing why you're trying to obtain those goals are always going to help you push past those hard times, push past those obstacles and keep yourself centered and keep yourself focused, uh, so that you don't, uh, relinquish, you don't want to quit, um, you, you stay the course and, and fight through those tough times. And again, continue to persist until you're able to accomplish that task uh, and achieve what it is that you're trying to achieve. Um, so definitely, I think it's important, again, to make sure that you have a full understanding of the purpose and the why behind the goals that you're setting. And once you have, again, that purpose set, 
then start to move forward with some of the steps that you can take to help you again achieve that task or complete that task and then achieve uh that that thing that you're trying to accomplish at that particular point yeah um i i I like the fact that, um, and I don't know if you're, you know, you're doing this intentionally or not, but um, in a lot of the recent sessions that we've had, you know, whether, you know, on, on our pod or um, on, you know, the most recent guest spot that we did, um, you keep coming back to the steam of the why, like having a strong mm -hmm. why. Um, and I think that's just critically, critically important when you think about, um, everything that you're doing as a leader, right? Making sure that you have that clearly defined first and foremost, um, because to your point, it's going to serve as the the catalyst, the motivator, um, the shot in the arm, whatever you want to call it, right? To help you overcome that moment of adversity that you're going to inevitably run into. Um, and I mm -hmm. think that's, that's important for um, our leaders to understand, especially when you're talking about establishing goals, right? If you're doing it right, if you're being ambitious in the goals that you're setting, if you are challenging yourself, challenging your team, if you're establishing stretch goals, you will inadvertently run into adversity on that path. You're going to run into challenges on that path. Um, if you're not, then chances are that your goals are probably not, you know, you know, stretch goals are not, you know, they're not um, challenging you. They're not requiring you to grow. Right. Uh, Excuse me. So um, I love the fact that you continue to come back to, you know, to this why, um, you know, as I'm listening to you talk, I, you know, I was just kind of thinking about because, um, <clears throat> you know, I'm big into history. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a, a history buff. And um, I remember as, you know, it's crazy as it sounds. Um, but as I'm reading through history, um, you know, Reagan was talking about, um, you know, one of the catalysts for his negotiations um, and wanting to negotiate with Gorbachev. Um, mm -hmm. in Russia, right, to end what has been, you know, a decades long Cold War. And he talked about, um, you know, what would happen if, you know, there was an alien invasion? How would that change the dynamic of what motivates us to find peace, right? The concept of this external threat being the catalyst mm -hmm. for urgency, right? Because sometimes self-discipline and internal will is is not merely enough, right? You have to have this bigger this bigger reason to create that urgency. And so that's what I think about when we're talking about defining the why, as much as we like to think about our, uh, think of ourselves as leaders, as people who are innately driven and, um, you know, have this unyielding self-discipline so that the concept of adversity or, you know, challenge, you know, being challenged and wanting to give up doesn't even enter our mind. That's mm -hmm. a, it's a fallacy. So it's, it's a lie. Like we've all been there before. Um, where we demonstrate our resolve is the ability to push on, even in the face of that adversity, to have those feelings and to have those moments of, man, I want to quit. And we've been there before. Like, even if you're talking about physically, we've been there before where you're pushing yourself through a workout and like, I want to stop like right here. I just, I don't want to go anymore. I want to lay down. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to puke. I don't want to run anymore. Like, I don't want to lift anymore. Like, no, I'm just not going to do it. All right. Um, but it's that, ex that greater external threat, that external motivation. I, yeah, I hate to use the word threat, but it's that bigger external why that creates that urgency for us to dig deep and find that resolve to push forward. And so the same is true with goal setting. That's why you have to define that why, especially if you're setting ambitious goals. Again, you're going to hit that wall where you're going to be like, this is too hard. What was I thinking? This is crazy. This is requiring more of me than I, than I imagined. This, you know, this is requiring more of my team than, than we thought possible. My team is looking at me like I'm crazy. Like, why do we even sign up to do this? Right. Mm -hmm. um, this seems impossible and probable. Like we are tripping. Right. You're going to hit that wall and then you have to be able to bring it back or anchor it back to that broader why, that bigger why to find that resolve. And so I love that you continue to kind of talk about that as, as necessary. So when you when you know the why and, and you have, you know, that that purposeful direction, then your goal inspires you. You should want to be inspired by the goals that you set, uh, but the deadlines are what really motivate you. So the goal inspires you, but the deadlines motivate you. So it's important once you set the goal, as we go through some of these steps, that, that you have deadlines, that you have specific time frames that you're working with to, to motivate you and to hold you accountable along the way. Uh, so when we talk about goal setting, 
we're really going to break it down and talk about, you know, how do we achieve these goals into four different steps. Uh, so number one is going to be writing it down, then aligning your goal, breaking it down, and then some important aspects to really think about in regards to committing to the goal. So when it comes to writing it down, right, it's and I've had this conversation with people too, right? People say, well, I, I have goals. Like I, I know what I'm trying to achieve. Like, okay, well, but did you write it down? Envision yourself as, uh, achieving this, this goal and accomplishing this task. Again, seeing those things, and we'll talk about visualization is, is super important, but unless it's written down, then it's really not a goal. It's, it's more of a dream or a desire. But once you start to, whether you're writing it down literally on a pen and pad or you're typing your goals down in OneNote or whatever you know, app you like to use on your phone or your computer, then it becomes real. You've written it down, you're seeing it, you've typed in it, you're writing it, you're, you're actually, you're able to read it back to yourself. It just becomes that much more real. And that's really the, the difference again, between desire and a goal. It's specific, it's something that you've written down um, and you have that reasoning behind it, you know the why and you have that, that purpose uh, of, again, why, why, do I, why do I wanna achieve this? This is the goal. This is why I want to achieve it. Um, and it really, again, fuels your your motivation to push forward. Absolutely. Um, I like that, too. Um, <clears throat> the difference between you said difference between desire and a goal. Right. Uh, the goal is written down, but a desire is something that is not committed to paper. Um, mm -hmm. And no, I, I, I think you're spot on the importance of the power of being able to write it down. <clears throat> um, I remember. Gosh, yeah, I'm trying to recall where I heard this from. Um, I want, I, maybe it was a movie, but it just resonated with me. You know, when they, they were talking about the power of saying things, right? Like speaking. And this is why I'm big into, you know, as a part of, you know, the visualization process, mm -hmm. there's some steps that I go through. And I know we're going to get into visualization a little bit um, later, but, you know, I try, you know, I try to say it, I try to write it, and then I try to visualize it. Um, and um, I remember, um, again, I can't remember where, but I remember, you know, the, the, the statement that resonated with me, right. Which is there's power, there's power in words. That's why you want to be mindful about what you say, you know, about yourself or you say to others, there's power in mm -hmm. words, right? Literally. That's why they call it spell. Like when you think about, you know, magic and, you know, kind of, you know, what we, you know, what we know to be fantasy and, you know, they cast a spell. It is literally, you know, them saying that there's power in the words that we say and the things that we write and the things that we do. And so um, when you think about <clears throat> the importance of writing down your goal, that's the visual, that's the image that comes to my mind is as I'm writing it down, I'm giving that, that goal life. I'm giving that goal power. I'm, I'm manifesting it. I'm calling it into reality. I'm calling it from, you know, um, you know, a, a, a idea, a thought, a concept into fruition. I'm breathing life into it. Um, you know, whether it's, <clears throat> you know, whether you, you know, that resonates with you or, um, you know, kind of, you know, I think about the same thing, like when you give birth to a child, right? You know, like the first thing you think about is the name, like, uh, what am I going to name it? Cause you understand mm -hmm. the importance of, um, you know, that name has meaning, it has weight. It, it, it changes the dynamic. It changes the relationship with this new entity, this new thing that is in this world, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so the same is true of your, your goals. Um, if you're gonna give birth to the goal, if you're going to manifest the goal, if you're gonna give it power, you have to write it down. You have to commit it to paper. It's just that next step um, in really being able to commit it. Um, you know, to your point, like you said, um, you know, a, a goal not written down is merely a desire. Uh, it's an aspiration. It's mm -hmm. fleeting. It's fleeting. How many, you know, think about um, for our listeners out there, think about how many fleeting thoughts we have throughout the day, you know, things that are, um, <clears throat> you know, things that may pop into our head or, you know, that's interesting. Right. But we don't take the time. We don't take the step to actually commit it. You know, then again, it's it's no different than another fleeting thought. Um, and so I love the fact that, you know, we're talking about the importance of being able to write it down, committing it to paper or typing it out, whatever the case may be. You have to go through these actual goal setting exercises, um, you know, in order to do it justice. And as you're going through that, it is important to make sure that that the goal is specific, like it can't be vague. Uh, that is important. And not just specific with the goal and what is it that you're trying to achieve, but making sure that you give yourself a deadline. Right. So if you know, I, I gave the example earlier about, 
you know, I my goal is I want to uh, to get better at creating business presentations using PowerPoint. You know, the reason that I want to do that is going to allow me to be a little bit more creative. It's going to allow me to, um, you know, add value to to the business um, and, uh, you know, provide a, a different aspect that maybe that we're not seeing it and help us to be a little bit more uh, efficient and creative with how we we provide messages, whether it's training or, again, just uh, some type of business presentation. All right. So I, I have that down and I want to make sure that I'm able to to accomplish and get to that step. That, that I see in my mind as, as improving, let's say in 60 days. You know, so I'm giving myself two months to go through a process to improve my skill set in creating business presentations using PowerPoint. Uh, so I have a specific goal, I have a specific deadline, and then I've gone back and again, I've looked at, at the why, but why it's important. Does this meet my values? Does it align with the business and what we're trying to do? Um, and you know why why am i devoting my time and my calories to this specific goal does it align and then move forward um so we'll get into the second step which is aligning it right so putting your goal in in perspective of your company um i mean we're kind of going a little bit back and forth between personal but again for a lot of our legacy leaders out there we, we definitely want to make sure that you're able to to apply these things within the workplace uh, so making sure that you're you're putting that goal into perspective of your company to make sure that not only is it important to you but it's also important to your company uh, there have been a number of times you know where myself and some teammates were asked to put together a presentation um I remember, you know, there was a time where you and I were, were kind of working together on like on a pitch book and stuff like that. So your business is is going to be asking and requiring these things of you. And so I have some skills and I can do some things, but I see that there's a need and there's a desire for this type of work. So I want to get better at that. So, again, it's something that I find interest in, uh, but also it's something that I see that is needed for my business. So there's alignment from that particular point. Yep. And um, to your point, we are <clears throat> kind of bouncing back and forth between personal and professional. Um, right. And um, you touched on professional, the professional application. I would say on the pro the personal side of that, um, you know, making sure that, you know, your goals align with your, you know, um, your, what you desire, what your aspirations ultimately align with your ultimate vision, your ultimate why of, mm -hmm. you know, what you feel your calling is or where you want to be at um, in your Absolutely. career at the end of the day. Right. So, um <clears throat> You know, kind of going back, you know, using you as an example, um, you know, you've had the opportunity, you know, across your career to really be able to get exposure to both the operation side of the house and the learning development side of the house. And I would say probably more um, recently over these past couple of years, you've had, you know, a real clarity in terms of where do you really see yourself growing in your career long term, right? Where do you see yourself ultimately, um, you know, committing to and um, continue your career and, you know, developing your skill sets and growing, right? Which is really the learning development space. Um, mm -hmm. You have a real passion about you know, passion about that. Um, <clears throat> And I think, you know, you know, that that passion was only magnified when you came to the realization or you exposed to the fact that the learning development is it's like a whole nother world of just opportunity It's much more than what most people think it is. They, you know, traditionally you think it's just training and delivering training and learning development is way more extensive than that and way more comprehensive than that. There's so many different mm -hmm. things that you can do from a learning development perspective. Right. Um, so you know, as you continue to pursue, you know, defining these goals and saying, okay, well, I want to pursue the skill of, you know, being better with business presentations, right? Because one, how does that align to the goals of my organization? Well, you know, there's a true need for this stuff. We need somebody who's a subject matter in this space and we have, you know, um, I'm going to be called on to contribute or I want to be called on to contribute. And so, yeah, I need to grow there, but also that goal aligns with your personal desires to continue to um, you know, round out your skill set and become more robust in the learning development space and build more credibility in the learning development space so that you can explore the other career opportunities that may be available at some point for you, right? Especially if you um, you have this ultimate desire of being, con you know, considered and respected and trusted as a true learning and development professional, somebody who has mastered and studied this craft. And so that's a, a great example of how um, you know, having this goal, a singular goal aligns with both the, the needs of the business and the needs per personally. Um, I think it's important, you know, as we have our listeners, um, you know, um, you know, just kind of following along here and you think about, OK, well, I know how I would apply this and think about how does this align with my personal goals. Um, 
for me, but how do I then translate this to the, those that I'm leading? Um, again, it comes back to those two things, right? You need to help them define the why for the organization. And maybe they need you to articulate that. Like, well, this is the bigger why of the organization, right? This is why we do what we do, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but then the next thing is to not just leave it there, but also ask them, okay, well, now what is like, what is your why? How does this align to what your ultimate goals are? Right. And you need to help them drive, uh, draw that distinction and say, OK, I get it now by me, you know, you know, being one of the top salespeople for the organization. Not only am I delivering on the businesses, why? Right. Of, you know, um, you know, building relationships, building communities, you know, um, creating you know, memorable experiences, wild experiences for our customers. Right. Um, but um, I'm also delivering on my personal why. Because the better I perform, the more um, you know monetary compensation I get, the more accolades I get, the more I'm you know respected as a, a sales professional, and so um, you know I'm able to put myself in a different financial position for my family. I'm able to you know pay off my car. I'm able to get the house that I want. Um, <clears throat> I'm able to you know build out my credentials so that maybe I can move on to other opportunities within the organization or outside the organization. Like as we go through that goal setting process, much like what we're doing for the listeners, when we're walking you through how to properly set the goal, that's mm -hmm. your calling as a leader to so walk your team through the process of properly setting goals. And um, again, goal setting, you know, as a leader for your team is not just saying, hey, you need to be at this, mm -hmm. right? It is really challenging them to help them understand, okay, well, what is the why? This is the why for the organization. What is your personal why? Right. Okay. Um, how are you going to achieve that? All right. Did we write it down? <laughs> right. Did we write it down? When are you going to achieve that by all of these things that we're talking about and sharing with our listeners? Um, you can absolutely share with your team as you walk through this exercise. One thing that, that I appreciate about what you, what you said in regards to the team is while you know, that was, it was a personal goal. It was something that, that definitely aligned with my aspirations, uh, my desires. Um, and definitely, obviously it, it aligned with the company, what the company was trying to do from a team perspective. I also wanted to be able to, to show and teach others, like you just mentioned, like there's so much more to learning and performance and learning and development that, that we really knew at the time, you know, so I, I wanted to make sure that I was hopefully opening doors for others uh, when it was time for me to to uh, hopefully get promoted or move on or whatever it, you know that situation was going to be. That again, I was kind of carrying that that torch right for for folks that were in this training or learning and development space. Um, and in doing so, like you said, all right. So, what are you passionate about? Like, yeah, you love teaching. Okay. So how do we how do we help you? How do we set goals to help you be like a master facilitator? Oh, you you like actually creating content. Uh, so there's things like instructional designers and, and a learning experience designer. What does that really look like? And, and how do we help you set up goals uh, to to, you know, eventually become something like that and do that type of work? Uh, so it was definitely important for me. Um, and but I also saw the importance of. How do I teach and, and inspire and open up some doors for the people that were on my team uh, as well so that they can like if you want to be in this space, like, yeah, there's opportunities for you and there's things that you can do. Let's learn about that. Let's test some things out. Let's experiment. Let's get better at these skill sets so that you have those opportunities. Oh, well said. So the first the four steps, uh, we just talked about the first two, writing it down uh, and then making sure that it aligns with your personal goals and hopefully the business and with the team goals as well. The third thing that you need to do is break it down. So I mentioned at the beginning, the goal inspires, but the deadline motivates you. So when you have that deadline and you have this ultimate task that you're trying to achieve or that your team is trying to achieve, then we have to break that down in steps. So. Um, Going back to the example of I gave myself, you know, two months to improve my skill set and my ability to use PowerPoint to create business presentations. OK, so maybe right now I'm at a beginner uh, in, you know, intermediate level as far as my skill set as PowerPoint. So one of the tasks that I, I may you know, have to do is how do I, you know, get better at the, the different bells and whistles and the functionality of PowerPoint? 
Um, maybe another task that I'll, I'll need to do is, you know, researching, you know, in 2020, what are, you know, some of the, the best designs and ideas for making a business presentation. Uh, so I'm starting, I know what the ultimate goal is, but now I'm starting to break it down into different tasks, into different steps. And as I do that, I'm still, I know the ultimate deadline, which is two months. Now I'm giving myself deadlines along the way to accomplish those smaller tasks that are going to ultimately allow me to achieve the goal and complete the larger task at the end. So think about all the things that you need to do to attain that goal. And once you have a good understanding of what the, the different tasks are, again, that you're going to need to accomplish to get to that bigger goal, then start to, to really consider um, kind of the order of those things, right? So don't even, you know, it's important to give yourself deadlines, but what are the first thing you need to do when you start breaking it down is what are all the steps that I need to uh, improve my skill set in using PowerPoints to create uh, business presentations and, and ones that you know can be used at, at C-suite levels. Mm -hmm. All right, these are all the things that I'm going to do. These are all the different tasks that I can do in order to achieve that different goal. Once I've brainstormed that, then I can start to put those things in order. What's the, the, the first thing I'm going to have to do? What's B? What's C? What's D? Once I have those steps laid out, then I can start putting timetables along this two month time frame that's going to allow me to, again, achieve that goal at the end. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's about breaking them into manageable chunks, right? Because I, yeah. I think that's the other thing, too, right? It's um, <clears throat> if you're doing a good job and you're setting these aspirational goals, mm -hmm. um, when you look at the, the entirety of the trip, that can seem overwhelming and daunting too, Absolutely. right? And so you're yeah. like, okay, all right. So now that I've kind of thrown out this um, this moonshot, right? I'll use moonshot as an example. And you know, we think about um, since I'm on a history kick uh, today, apparently, right? Uh, when JFK um, got up and kind of you know swagged down and said, "Hey, we're gonna, you know, Americans, we're gonna get to the moon, <laughs> right? We're gonna get mm -hmm. to the moon before uh, Russia. Um, Russia, I don't want no beef. If y'all listen to the podcast and." or anything like that just you just happen that there's just a lot of history examples that involve uh a, a friendly competition um yes. you know, between the countries right um but uh yeah uh we're gonna get we're gonna ultimately end up getting to the moon right before before russia we're gonna set a moon shot mind you uh america at the time had struggled to actually have a successful um launch Right, have a successful launch and even have a successful spacewalk. Um, if you actually look at the history um, in that competition, and I, I say you know friendly competition in jest, obviously, right, because um, the Cold War was definitely um, divisive, right. Mm -hmm. But when you look at that, they were both in the in uh, in competition to establish um, you know space supremacy. Right. Because um, the thought process, the prevailing thought process was, you know, who, whatever country could dominate space at the time would also have a strategic advantage, a tactical advantage, you know, um, you know, with any conflicts that could potentially come up. I mean, everybody was concerned about, you know, um, you know is a is a country is one of these countries going to um, end up having a, um, a base full of nukes um, in space. Right. That could, mm -hmm. uh, could allow them to strike um, each other with ease. Um, so when you think about that, right. And, you know, JFK is up there and he's like, we're going to get to the moon. Like imagine how those scientists felt the same ones that were struggling to just get like a successful launch. They're like, hold on, this man talking about the moon. Like we're going to land on the moon and come back. Like, right. Um, and so just the, the thought of that in itself can just be very overwhelming and daunting, but, um, actually, um, and again, I, I know this cause I'm again, big into history. So I'm just consuming the documentaries, the process that they went through to establish, well, how do we work our way to that? What are all the things that mm -hmm. need to occur, um, between that goal, accomplishing that goal and where we're at today in order to bring that to fruition. And now that we've established that goal, we're measuring ourselves towards it. We're talking about it, right? Now let's um, let's pull it back and let's just focus on breaking it down and delivering on each one of those steps, right? We have to have mm -hmm. we have to have a way to successfully launch. Boom. Okay, did, did we do that? We have to have a way to. Um, uh, make sure that we can recover any vessel that comes back into the atmosphere. We have to have a way for whatever probe we're using to safely land, 
right and safely return like and so they just broke it into these these bite-sized chunks of problems and solve for each problem and then track their pro progress along the way and so the same is true when you're talking about establishing your personal goals you're talking about establishing goals for your team is it's a it's a huge task right i think um in our last our last uh, stint together um we had a goal of you know achieving 2000 hvac sales um, mm -hmm. We had 2000 HVAC sales during peak season, like a three month span. Um, right. And mind you, I think the most that we've ever done in that period of time was maybe about like 1500 or something like that. Um, and, you know, obviously there's a you know, there's a bunch of different external factors. Right. And so that's what people are starting to think about. They're like, man, that's an aggressive goal. That's a big goal. Mm -hmm. That's a good goal. I know what it would mean for the organization if we hit that. Right. Um, in terms of, you know, our, our speed to install and what that means for, um, you know, um, monetary compensation for the organization, for the individuals, um, all that good stuff. Right. Um, but then you know, people are like, well, how, like, how are we going to do that? Right. Um, and then, so it, we had to take it back and start with, okay, well, let's get to the life cycle, right? Let's talk about the life cycle of our business, right? Where does it start? It starts with the lead, right? What can we do, you know, from a lead perspective in order to put ourselves in the best position, you know, to succeed. All right. Let's exhaust everything we can do there. All right. Then it starts with converting. Right. So what can we do in order to address conversion to put ourselves in the best position to succeed? All right. The next step. Right. Well, after we convert it, we got to make sure that the appointment um, gets ran. Right. And confirm what can we do. Right. And then, OK, now it's sales. OK, what can we do from a sales perspective to set up our external, um, our field sales partners, but also our internal sales um, associates to be successful. All right. But now we also have to make sure it gets installed. What can we do or what do we have ownership over to help improve the installation process and bring visibility to gaps in the installation process that would prevent us from hitting that goal? All right. And then how do we continue to measure our progress in each one of these steps? to ensure that we're heading in the right direction, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so again, to your point, it really does start with, once you establish that lofty goal, once you, you establish that, that aggressive goal, all right, let's break it down into the functional steps that it takes in order to achieve it. And then let's start charting that on the timeline to make sure that we're hitting our, our, our timeframe that we committed to. And then again, from there, how do we continue to measure along the way to ensure that we're being successful and we're heading in the right direction? Two great examples, uh, detailed examples uh, of, again, the importance of setting some lofty goals, but then the importance of going back and breaking it down. So once you know that you're, you're, the goal is in line with the organization and the objectives for success and that it may be a stretch goal, but it's still realistic, then you, again, break it down into individual tasks, start brainstorming those different tasks. After you consider the different tasks that you have uh, and that could be possible, then you start to order those those tasks. Make sure that you put deadlines, think about the cost, You know what's the investment of money, time, resources to each one of those tasks so that you could better align the order of those tasks. Uh, and then really the last thing you're gonna to need to do is then start to to block out time um, as an individual or as a team, you know, within your planner, within your calendar, so that you have specific time dedicated each day or each week to, again, getting those tasks accomplished. Yeah. So we've written it down. We've made sure that our goals aligned. We've broken it down. And the last step, step number four, is to commit. Exactly. So when we say commit, like you, you truly truly commit to the goal and you're going to vow to achieve that so when we say vow there's three pieces to that uh first is visualize the goal that's the v v is visualize the goal the o is going to be orally commit to the goal and then the w is work through the obstacles so we're kind of alluding to the the visualization process um but it's important it's important that okay i've i've committed um to these goals but what is that the visualization the visualization that we're talking about here is what does it look like once we accomplish those goals mm -hmm. you know so even going back to the example of the moonshot like i'm sure there was talks about that there was there was you know visualization and thoughts about what is it going to really look like once the united states is the first to do this and we accomplish that particular goal so even if it's on a personal level again i'm going i'm going to go back to the example uh, of 
I'm trying to improve my skills in uh, creating content and PowerPoint so I can make better business presentations. So once I achieve that goal and I have that first, you know, kind of revamped, newly designed presentation that I provide, you know, to my coworkers that I provide to my boss and it, it gets used, you know, in this, uh, again, this uh, upper level uh, presentation and communication, what is that going to look like? You know, I, I can see myself, you know, providing that material. I can see myself, you know, getting congratulated by my team members, maybe even getting congratulated by my boss. You know, I see myself maybe sitting around the table and talking with my spouse, maybe kind of telling my kids the story of, of that moment and what that felt like. Um, so I'm visualizing all of these different aspects on how it's going to look, how it's going to feel. You know, even how it's going to sound in those moments when those those huge positive um, opportunities and kind of scenarios are starting to unfold once that goal is accomplished. So, again, you want to be able to visualize all of those things to to make it that much more real in your mind. So you you like you feel it. Right. So now I've I've committed to it and I know what I'm trying to accomplish, but I, I've ran it through in my mind so that now I really feel it. And I'm even that much more excited and hyped and motivated to to make sure that I execute on this plan that I just put together. Absolutely. Um, the reason why I love visualization, <clears throat> um, aside from the fact that, you know, it has worked for me, you know, um, exceptionally well uh, over you know, my career, my life, just in general, um, is because I, I Naturally, when I start talking to people about visualization, folks that are not used to doing it or um, not familiar with the concept, it's met with skepticism. It's met with like, eh, okay, I hear you, but like, and it's almost like a, a half-hearted commitment or, um, again, just, um, you know, uh, not believing that it represents as much value or is as effective as people may uh you know, may attest that it is right. Um, and I guess kind of my counter to that <clears throat> for anybody that has um, doubts or, you know, questions about the power of visualization is, um, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, you think about the fact that you can have thoughts, you can have a thought, right? Like, um, I I've, re you know, I've had to deal with this, you know, since becoming, you know, a parent, right. You know, you have like you watch something on the news, right? And it's something that unfortunately is sad or terrible, right? And then for a minute, for a minute in your mind, like you think about like, what if that was my kid? And you put yourself there, mm -hmm. and then you get this physical feeling to it, like this this gut, like like whether it's anger or, or you know um, sadness or disgust or like you just feel it, right? That's how powerful your mind is. Like literally, that's how powerful your mind is. The deja vu, deja vu is nothing more than a form of unfocused visualization. Yeah, you know, usually mm -hmm. what happens a lot of times is you've had these thoughts going around in your head, you're, and then you have a moment where there's something that aligns with that thought and your mind will repurpose the those thoughts and f form them into a memory. And then you're left with this thought like, I, you know, I've been here before. Like I've said this, right? We've done this thing before, right? Um, so much so that like you firmly believe it, you have an external factor that's validating a mental thought and you think that you've manifested that, mm -hmm. that, um, <clears throat> you know, that mental thought into reality. And so, you know, by visualizing, you actually allow yourself to, to take control of your brain, right. And use that to your benefit, right. And play on the fact that you can have meant, you know, kind of these mental images or these thoughts and actually have physical responses to them. Right. So, um, I love, you know, what you kind of walk through because when you tell people about it, they think it's corny, but like, you need to visualize every single detail of what it looks like when you're successful. How did you feel? Like, what are you wearing? What are their, what are their mm -hmm. expressions, right? Like the over-exaggerated, like, oh my God, this is amazing. This is the best thing I've ever heard. Like you yeah. tell yourself that you visualize that you put yourself there, you feel it. And then what happens is inevitably when you get into the situation where it's time to deliver your mind, much like deja vu says, oh, we've been here before. I know how this plays out. We're going to do a really good job. Right. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> you have the the benefit of, again, just that that commitment, that mental commitment um, that makes it easier to execute and, um, you know, tap into that energy, tap into that creativity. Um, 
Okay. You know, and again, bring bring that goal to fruition. Um, so again, you know, visualization is so important. Again, um, if you don't believe me, you know, think about deja vu. Um, think about you know when you um, you know when you mentally think about something and then you see it manifest in the real world. Right? You have you, you see a car that you love. Right? Oh man, you know that um, you know that that uh, Mustang is super dope, or that Rover is dope. And the next thing you know, you're driving down the road and you see them everywhere. Right? Again, mm-hmm. it's they for the most part, they've always been there, but now your mind is hyper aware. Your, your mind is more aware of it because you've committed to, you, you committed to it mentally. Um, and your mind is bringing to your attention, you know, the things that you need to pay attention to, to bring that image, that mental image to fruition. So, um, again, you absolutely should leverage that, um, as a part of your goal setting process. Yeah. And it doesn't have to necessarily be, you know, kind of a long drawn out thing. You could just take three minutes, yep. take three minutes to, to work through those scenes. Again, the sounds, the smells, the words, how it's going to feel and, and give yourself that visualization and then orally commit to the goal. So whether you're sharing that with a friend, a family member, a mentor, you know, sometimes in in the business sense, I think about, you know, um, kind of going through that, that monthly goal setting process, like you have to share the goals, you know, with the, your boss or the person that you report to. Um, but it's still also, I think even adding additional layers of accountability if, okay, well, I, I have to talk to my boss, but I don't have to talk to my mentor about it, but you should like, let your mentor know that these are goals that I have. You know, there's this goal that I have to uh, improve my skill set in PowerPoint so I can make some, you know, some really um, impactful business presentations for upper management uh, and the executives. And I'm trying to get this done in 60 days, you know, and I'm letting you know so that you can hold me accountable, ask me questions along the way to make sure that I'm following through on them executing on the plan that I have. And it's really, it's like the buddy system, Mm -hmm. you know, um, I I have a goal to, to lose weight and I've gone through all of the steps and and I've put the plan together, but now I'm saying, Hey, Devon, like, this is where I'm at. This is a goal. Um, and I I want you to be part of, of my buddy system to ensure that again, there's accountability there and support. Sometimes there's accountability, but sometimes it's just encouragement. Again, we know that which we're going to talk about next, there's going to be obstacles. So knowing that I have a couple of individuals that I've verbalized and I've uh, orally committed this to, they can hold me accountable one, but then two, they can also provide encouragement along the way. Exactly. So we know because nothing, you know, you've, gone through this whole process of thinking about the goal what are the steps that need to be taken you know what's what's uh the the order that these steps need to be taken into you've put deadlines so you have a solid plan you're you're very excited about implementing the plan but nothing is oh it's just not going to be perfect there's going to be bumps in the road and there's going to be obstacles and so many times we forget to think about, okay, well, what happens if something does go wrong? What happens if the plan does not go completely as I've outlined it? So before you even get started, that's the W, is work through the obstacles. Think about and maybe even have conversations with other people. What are some things that can go wrong along the way? Yep. No, absolutely. I think you have to, you have to, um, yeah, again, you have to be intentional about thinking about that or planning for it. And you're not going to be able to identify every potential pitfall, right? But mm-hmm. um, it's important to kind of talk through those things um, and strategize and game plan and kind of develop, okay, well, what is our um, what is our workaround? What is our plan B um, to still achieve our desired goal? <clears throat> Um, yeah, I kind of think about it, you know, from the time that, you know, my pops, you know, first, you know, kind of taught me how to drive, um, you know, and, you know, I just thought, oh man, this is like, this is open up a whole world of freedom. This is going to be awesome. Right. Like I got my license, like I got my whip now. Right. Um, you know, I'm, I'm hitting the road, I'm going. Um, and you know, obviously he wants me to have that, that freedom. Um, but you know, one of the things he was insistent about just stressing with me though, is, Hey, you need to be able to think through, like, what are you going to do? Like, what do you do in the event that like you blow a tire, you run out of gas, you have engine failure, Right you're stuck on the side of the highway, you know, it's night. Like he's just, you know, these common scenarios that obviously me being naive and having the goal of just like, I'm just trying to get to, you know, I'm just trying to get to Miami. Right. Uh, right. Or I'm trying to get to New York. Right. Um, I have that goal and, you know, I know I've plotted out my plan. I'm going to take this, you know, take this highway and go all the way up and I'm going to be good. Um, you know, he was the one who was insistent about making sure that, Hey, you think through like, what are some of the, 
potential issues you can run into along the way so that you've already thought through potential solutions and you're not trying to solution for it while you're in the middle of, you know, of the issue um, with the added pressure and urgency of, you know, trying to process everything. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Just because, uh, again, if, if you already have a plan or you already have some of those things kind of thought through, it makes it a, a lot easier to be able to manage those scenarios or their situations. Right. So um, I can, you know, I can say because of that, like, fortunately for me, like when I ran into a situation where like my tire, you know, my tire blew, right. I knew how to deal with it. Right. Like I, I knew how to do instinct kicked in because I remember, oh, I had already like I'd already thought through this. I already talked through this, you know, uh, what pops or other individuals. So I know what I need to do here. Right. And it, um, it actually gave me a sense of, um, you know, confidence and comfort because obviously mm -hmm. it's not the desired outcome. Like I didn't want my tire to pop. Like that's not what I wanted to do or wanted to experience so I can demonstrate and use this part of my plan. Like that's not what I wanted, but it felt good knowing that I had an answer and that I also knew because I had thought through the potential problem and I had an answer. I also knew that I had the tools at my disposal to execute on that answer. Right. So I knew I had the spare. I knew I knew how to change a tire. I knew I knew how to, um, you know, make sure that, um, you know, I had, you know, an emergency cone set up so that, you know, people, other drivers would be aware that I'm currently working on the vehicle. I knew if I, you know, if, um, you know, the, t the, the spare went bad, that, okay, I had a number that I can call for roadside assistance. I knew what to do in that situation in the event that I'm on the side of the road and it's poorly lit, right, where I need to position myself to ensure that I'm not, at, you know, at risk of potentially getting hit by somebody else. Like, I knew all of those things and I knew what to do. So that just gave me a different level of confidence and a different level of comfort and a different level of ease, right? And so, yeah, it threw a wrench in my ultimate plan, but I was able to work through the, the situation and end, back, end up back on track to you know my desired goal. And so um, I think that's where <clears throat> the rubber meets the road, uh, I guess, rounding out the blown tire uh, <laughs> analogy, uh, the, the rubber meets the road in terms of like, you know, you're planning this whole entire goal setting and planning process for a lot of leaders is um, the shortcoming is um, at times it's not thinking through what happens if it doesn't go as planned. Like what happens if you run into an obstacle? What happens if, um, you know, something that you were counting on to come through, like it, it doesn't like, what do you do? How do, how yeah. do you ensure that you, you hit your goal? There's going to be external factors. So I think it's also having the self-awareness, uh, because it may be internal factors. Mm -hmm. Right. So as you're working through these these potential obstacles to helping you achieve your goal, it could be, you know what, I, I tend to procrastinate at times. You know, maybe there's going to be days where I have you know, I'm just low on energy. Um, maybe I don't even know where to start. You know, so I'm thinking about these things. Um, you know, maybe, you know, I might run into the obstacle that I start to worry about other things that come up. Um and other, you know, other objectives and other responsibilities that I have that um that are roles that I have in my life and how do I manage all of these things as I'm trying to, to attain this goal and achieve yeah. these tasks and things that I'm trying to well, do. So, so making a, yeah, making a list of those things and, and items and, and really helping yourself to prevent those obstacles. Um, I think one of the important things is like, take it seriously, like commit to your goal, right? So when we use that word vow and commitment, I think about marriage mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm, I'm, stating my vows and, and I'm committing to this relationship and I'm committing to, um, to this future, um, because I'm so committed to the goals and the things that we're trying to accomplish. So just make that vow earnestly seek to achieve that goal. Uh, again, by making sure that you visualize you orally commit to the goal and then work through the obstacles. Um, so those are the four steps, write it down, align it, break it down and then commit, but commit by bowing earnestly to achieving that goal. And the last thing I think you wanted to touch on uh, before we, we wrap it up is, is now that I'm going through this process, just making sure that I'm charting and I'm measuring my success along the way uh, to ensure that I'm keeping pace and, and I'm doing the things that I need to do to ultimately hit that that uh, that goal at yep, the end. No, a thousand percent, man. Um, you know, kind of going back to the um, the trip analogy, right? If you get in the car and you know what your final destination is in mind, um, 
as you're driving along the way, right, you're constantly doing a status check just to make sure I'm heading in the right direction, right? I didn't miss the exit, right? I know that my, you know, my, um, you know, MapQuest, Google Maps, Waze, whatever you decide to use, um, I doubt anybody's actually pulling out old maps and, you know, charting like they used to, even though I, I, I yeah, that. even though I remember the, I remember those days. I remember when, um, you know, mom and pops would, you know, take us on a road trip. Like, you know, we went up to DC and one time we went up to Atlanta and like, literally I have images of my pops, like busting out a map and like, okay, we right here. Uh, <laughs> all right. And now in hindsight, I'm like, man, that was crazy. Like I really, we were on some like Lois and Clark type stuff. Like we were explorers. <laughs> like, we, <laughs> like they was really exploring out here. Like <laughs> oh, you're crazy. for real, that's how, that's how I think about it now. I'm like, man, we was explorers, explorers. Like, um, I, I remember, yeah, I remember the maps. And then once, uh, Google Maps kind of came, but this was before you had access to it on your cell phone. Off. Like, you know, you, yeah, you get, make sure, okay, I have all the steps and I print it out and I still have the paper. And I still have the map. <laughs> oh, all right. Next, next step, we're going to make a left like three miles up the road. Yo, that yeah. was pops for real. Yeah, bro. Like, oh, like print them off and like we'd have these stacks and it's like, okay, I got this one because my pops is super. So when we talk about like um, goal setting and planning and stuff like that, like he is super, super into that about everything. I think it's probably a little bit of the military like literally mm -hmm. went and took vacations where he's had a full itinerary for every single day for the, like uh at 0700 we're gonna wake up at uh 07 uh you know uh 7 30 we're gonna have breakfast breakfast is gonna consist of oatmeal eggs <laughs> so pops if you listen you know i ain't lying um <laughs> but um seriously i remember we had like he would have the map for all right this is to get to where we're going this is to get to the various attractions and to get back from those attractions. This is to get back home. And like, we had like a folder of like just Google printouts. Um, <laughs> but uh, true to form, like when we were taking those trips or even now, um, if you're using modern technology, uh, you know that you're constantly checking to make sure that I'm heading in the right direction, right? Um, and so that's what really charting and measuring your progress is about. It's those touch bases to make sure that, hey, I haven't missed an exit. Hey, I'm still heading in the right direction. Hey, I'm on the right road. Hey, this is going to take me to my, to my final destination, right? This is going to take me to where I need to be. And um, it's also helpful because as you go through that process and you're charting, you can also determine where, you know, you may have detours that come up. And it doesn't mean that you don't get to your in your final destination. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that you don't get to where you're ultimately trying to get. It just means that, okay, well, now I have to chart a different path to be able mm -hmm. to get back there, right? So if something, if an obstacle came up in the road or, you know, I remember one time I was traveling to um, Tampa or St. Pete or something like that. I hit the road, Tampa or St. Pete, um, just because, you know, it's only like an hour and a half or whatever. I'm like, go out there and chill and, you know, hit the beach, check out the Dolly Museum, get something to eat, all that stuff. But on my way back, back to Orlando, back to um, <clears throat> the Orlando at the time, like there was like a legit, like on I-4, and there was like a huge accident detour and it had me like get off in like the middle of Podunk, Florida. You know what I mean? Um, and so um, while that wasn't my plan, right, I had to, you know, I had to reroute. I had to figure out something different. Right. Um, and then throughout that process, I was making sure I was actually probably I ramped up the frequency of how often I was checking in on my GPS. Right. But I was making sure I was heading in the right direction to get back on track to get into Orlando. Right. Um, I think I was in like um, Leesburg or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but um, that's again, that's why it's important as you're you know, you're talking about this goal setting, whether it's for yourself or for your team, you have a way to measure your progress and chart your progress so that people know, are we heading in the right direction? Did we hit a, uh, a obstacle in the road? Do we need to detour? And then as we're going through the detour, is this getting us back on pace to ultimately end up to where we need to be? And so you have to measure it. And I don't care what it is. It may not be um, a goal that's that's tied to um you know, um, you know, maybe a quantifiable, like a sales goal or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter, right? Even if it's, you know, going back to your goal about, you know, developing your, your business presentation skills, if you're already going through the process of breaking down the things that need to occur, you should be measuring your progress there, right? You should be measuring. Yeah. You have a checklist. Check check yep. This week I should be confident this, next week I should be confident that. And if I'm not, I need to assess why 
why that didn't happen and then what adjustments do I need to make along the way to catch up or make sure that I'm still keeping pace to hit that goal in two Absolutely, months. right? And so um, again, you know, you can you can chart, you can measure, um, you can have that visual, whatever it may be, whether the goal is quantifiable or not, but you need to do it in order to make sure that you're heading in the right direction. That is um, extremely, extremely important. Yeah. So there you have it, legacy leaders. Um, we talked about the choosing goals and the importance of making sure that you have a, a well-established reason. What's the purpose? What's the why for the goals? Once you've gone through that process, we talked about four different steps, writing it down, aligning it, breaking it down, and then committing to it. And then again, vowing. So visualizing, uh, orally committing to the goal and sharing that with other people and then working through any uh, potential obstacles along the way. Once you have the plan outline, you start to work through it, make sure that you're you're charting the path and you're measuring your success. Um, whether again, you know that there's specific KPIs I have to hit that makes it a little bit easier, or I have my plan and I have this checklist and I'm going through that checklist on a consistent basis to ensure that, uh, again, I'm moving at the right pace to achieve that goal uh, by the deadline. Um, so that's it. That's that's goal setting uh, as part of our foundational skills of leadership. Um, as we go into episode, yes, sir, as we go into episode 19, uh, we've discussed time management. We've just finished discussing goal setting. Then we're going to get into productivity uh, and again, some different steps and, and techniques and things that you can do to be more productive uh, in life and more productive in, in the business world and just more productive as a leader overall. Uh, so be on the lookout for episode 19 as we come to that. Uh, and again, as you're going through the process of, of listening to the podcast uh, or watching the video podcast, you know, make sure that again, you subscribe to the channel, make sure that you, you download, uh, the episodes, uh, leave us reviews or leave us a comment on the YouTube channel. Uh, we have a couple of legacy leaders, uh, that are doing that. We do read them. We do reply. Uh, again, we get even that much more excited when we're getting that type of feedback. So continue to do that. Go ahead. Number two, take that screenshot, click, uh, and go ahead to once you have the screenshot of the podcast or if you're taking a screenshot of the, the video podcast, go to Instagram, uh, put it on your stories, tag us at Legacy Leadership, uh, tag myself at Coach underscore Jimmy Jr. and or tag Devon at Le uh, excuse me, Leadership Docent. Um, and then leave some comments. You know, again, let us know. I think he's taking a snapshot right yeah, now. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> leave some comments again get into the conversation let us know what do you think about specifically this episode the four steps that we broke down for you on how do you achieve personal and business success through goal setting um it is a little bit different than maybe what you've heard of you know uh smart goals but devon talked about there's you know kind of the the, the kind of the, some of the basic tools that you need, but how do we round out this whole toolbox? And we hope that these four steps took it to another level for you uh, as well. Um, and then share, share uh, the podcast uh, with your friends, with family, share it with other individuals that you know uh, would like to or need to be part of this legacy leadership tribe. Uh, sharing is caring, so we appreciate that very much. Um, Stay tuned. Again, episode 19 uh, is coming right around the corner and we'll be discussing productivity. Uh, so to all of our legacy leaders out there, again, thank you uh, for staying with us. Thank you for listening. Thank you for uh, interacting and engaging with us along the way and getting into the conversation. Uh, for myself, Jimmy Gonzalez Jr. and my co-host, Anthony Devon Watch Jr. Uh, Till next time. God bless and stay encouraged, y'all. Rage on that beat, going crazy. You have just listened to the Legacy and Leadership Podcast, hosted by Jimmy Gonzalez and Devon Watts. Thank you, and we hope that you live, lead, and leave a legacy worth remembering. Until next time.